Hello everybody and welcome to the winter instalment of the Historics podcast. We are recording this just ahead of our final auction of the year. We are at the Brooklyn's Racing Circuit and I'm joined as ever by auction expert Matthew Pretty. Hello. And YouTuber and car fan Tom Exton. Hello. Hello, boys. I think you've been relegated from YouTube X, but like, so now just car expert. It was like extraordinaire or superstar yes, before, and yes. it's just gradually it's sort of coming down to my level. Well, the thing is, you used to write them, <laughs> your intros for yourself, and now I'm writing them. Okay, yeah. so it's getting more honest then. <laughs> fine. Right. Well, hey, well, fine. Right, coming up in this podcast, we are wrapping things up in the festive season, and we now make the tenuous link between Christmas pullovers and being pulled over in your car. And as the Football World Cup starts and it sorts the, the men from the boys very much, then we add cars into that mix and we have a look at which country makes which motors. Ooh. And it's not the obvious ones. Good, we're good. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Plus, we are here at Brooklands, which once was a thriving motor racing circuit. And I share a few facts about it as well, which I find mm. quite fascinating. And right at the end, we're going to finish off with some Christmas gags. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? We're ready. Are you uh, ready? Ready. First of all, though, a catch up. What have you all been doing? Matthew? Well, a f- a busy consigning, really. Um, this sale comes right before Christmas, and everyone knows that there isn't another sale until March, which seems a long way away. So, Four naturally, months. everyone's cramming it in. Um, so, it's been jaunting around the place, checking out people's cars quickly valuing, making sure we can get them to market. Um, And of course, a bit of videoing, which we did a couple of weeks back with the 930 and the Di Tommaso. So it's just been work, 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 really. My idea is work, 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 finish this auction, and then just disappear somewhere. (laughs) Hide, because no one wants to speak to me at Christmas. What about your family? Them included, yes, yes. (laughs) Paramount, only on my own. Tom, what about you? I uh, can't remember really what I've been doing since the last uh, podcast. Uh, various Formula Ones. I went to Mexico. Oh, nice. The Formula One over there. Yeah. Well, I didn't do anything at the Formula One wise. I was just there spectating upon it. Um, uh, I've been to Switzerland working as well. Uh, did some stuff over there. And I'm sure I, there was another Formula One in Italy or something. Oh, uh, so after. blase. I know. It all rolls into one, oh. Matthew, you see. It's, uh, you know, just I've been in Switzerland with one, watches, Formula One. Oh, It's just one big depressing mulch, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you should be quite good then in our little quiz of where cars come from. Have you I, 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 dipped around various mm, countries? I'm not sure you can draw that from it. I'm not sure how I, much I will attention be drawing. I was paying. I will be drawing from that. Okay, well, well wish myself luck with that one. Um, and obviously I was filming uh, last week or so with, with the 930 Turbo, D Tommaso and uh, the AC and whatnot, which was a lot of fun. And you can see that on the Historics YouTube channel. You can, so, yes. Really. It's good, actually. That's, I've noticed since I've been here as well, we've got more red cars. Red cars everywhere. It is red. Well, yeah. it's Christmas, isn't it? Come yeah, on. There you go. Which brings us on to your next subject, it? It does bring us on beautifully. The Christmas pullovers. Who's got one? I've got one for my dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes! We make him wear it every year. Now we're talking. Yes. <gasps> it looks super cute, in it? Does it have dangly bits, noisy bits? And the jumper. <laughs> <laughs> no, All of the above. It's just, it's just a nice little jumper. He puts it on, looks nice and snug. Which It's a bit mean when the fire's also then going and the poor thing's like keeling over. But no, um, it, it just, yeah, it's a really cute little thing. He's a little Irish terrier. He's, he's popping in his little Christmas jumper and it's a bit like, it's like accessorising the house. Yeah. Uh, Tom? I've got a Father Christmas outfit for my little bulldog and I think I've got some sort of fairy outfit for the, for the rescue, but I don't have anything for myself. I'm not very festive you need, at all. You need a Father Christmas onesie and a fairy for a mi- onesie. It, for a minute, I thought he was going to say, I've got a Father Christmas outfit, which I use in between the seasons. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought for yourself. Just, it's just comfy. I feel relaxed in it. <laughs> I love that. You do need to get something for yourself. I know. That would be... I used to. When, really I, was, when I was working in office, we'd have Christmas jumper day. Yeah. So you'd have, to, you'd have to get one. Otherwise, I don't know, or you'd, be, you'd be fired or something. So. Yeah. But uh, these days, no. But I will. I'll get into the spirit this year. I'll try. Excellent. What about you? Um, I have two, yeah. One wow. matchy matchy with the family, which we only got last year, and did you, one. Did you do like a family photo and put it out to all the? No, we didn't. Like the American, a very American. Oh yeah, do, yeah, isn't yeah. No, we don't do that. No, we don't do that <laughs> this year. <laughs> maybe. However, <laughs> great idea. <laughs> um, and then our smooth link into Have you ever been pulled over? Ah, clever. Whilst driving, um, or even in the passenger seat. In terms of festive pullover stories, no. I was once hit uh, hit by an ambulance on Christmas Eve. <gasps> so uh, there was, I guess there's an element of being sort of in the wrong to the place. Side of the, 
I don't no, I was actually all right, but this I can't be bothered to go into it, but I've just whacked out of the blue, it was chaos. Um but in terms of being pulled over, no. Have we not? But did you did you interrupt the ambulance people's emergency journey at all? Well I didn't I was involved but I didn't interrupt. They interrupted themselves by not you know, not Did they have their noises they, and lights they on? They did, yeah. Okay. Right, so, you were trying to assign blame here to our emergency services, Thomas. It sounds like you were fully at fault. <laughs> I don't want to throw them under the bus, but it, it wasn't it wasn't my fault. Oh, let, should we move on? Yes, let's move on. I, I've, I've dragged the whole thing into a thoroughly unfestive situation. This is what happens. Don't talk to me about Christmas. I have only depressing Christmas stories. Um, that's it. Anyway. Thank you. Yeah. Yourself or Matthew? I, I got pulled over. What? So strangely, I was driving. I think it was it was near here. It was near Weybridge, and I got pulled over just after some traffic lights. You know, all the lights on. I was like, what's going on here? Sort of completely confused, really. Pulled over. So the, the officer wanders out. And I think I was in an old BMW X3. got a family wagon, so it wasn't one of the auction cars. Nothing special. And he sort of, I went the window down. Hello, yes. It's, our, our cameras are telling me you've, you're, not, um, you've not, you're not taxed. And I'm saying, no, that's rubbish. Of course I'd be taxed. Of course I've got vehicle tax. I work in this industry. <laughs> I, of course I'd know about it. And he's looking at me and looking at the car and going, yeah, he doesn't. He, he seems so shocked. He, he must have attacked. This must be something wrong with the computer. He sort of looked confused <laughs> at me. I looked confused at him for a little bit. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, um, just check when you get home and maybe... He didn't even write me a producer. I sort of, as I then drove home, got more and more sort of thing in my head thinking, have I got tax? I must have tax. I must have vehicle tax. No, I must have tax. Of course, of course I've got this. Went home, checked. Three months. Really? I hadn't, I just, oh, because it was, this wow. was before, um, it wasn't really before, but it, I didn't do the month by month thing. Mm. So you'd pay every year, didn't get yeah. the reminder, yeah, or didn't yeah. see I've the reminder. I've had that so many times, yeah. m- months yeah. and months without it, you well, know, I was MOTs, amazed all sorts. how I'd driven for that long without an AMPR camera or something other than that firing off. Yeah. But I was so surprised, and he was so surprised, they just let me go. I think nothing of it. Wow. That it must be your angelic face. Must be. Face. <laughs> they probably <laughs> recognise you, to be fair. That was just, this was pre all of my fame. Uh, That's before. Uh, yeah, now you definitely get a ticket. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was the oddest pull over. I mean, other than that, I've been pulled over a couple of times in in classics and things. But predominantly, they're just sort of checking. I'm okay. Yes. <laughs> Are you still okay driving that car? Yeah. You'll be all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> One of my most frustrating ones was when I when the new mobile phone laws were coming in. Mm. They came in, I think, 2003. You weren't allowed to use a mobile phone. And a f- few months before that actually came about, there was sort of some police presence saying, look, you know, we are going to start implementing this. And I got pulled over and severely reprimanded for using my phone, mm. which I don't do anymore. And... Then about a day later, my brother got done as well, <clears throat> and um, he sort of seemed to get away more scot-free than I did, which is mm. always a little. You know, the odd thing now is, of course, is everyone uses their phone more because they put the satellite navigation on it. Unless you've got Apple CarPlay, or even if you do, it's all yeah. through your phone. Yeah. So the moment you're in your phone, you. Yeah. I don't understand why you can. So CarPlay is your iPhone screen. Yes. Or your Android screen. With all your contacts, all your Everything's music there. Everything's there. Yes. And you can chit chat away on WhatsApp and whatever you want using your phone, like talking to it and prodding it and using whatever. Using a Siri call. And you can be changing the, the air con and doing your phone and yep. this, that and the other. Surely that screen should just be off when you're driving. I mean, I don't want it to be. I like the fact you can use it all, but I don't know. You can be in the depths of Spotify looking for some sort of nonsense and that's fine but you can't really? prod your phone you can't even check the, check the time on it well, everyone would have both ex- should be banned everyone would have experienced this even at home that when you're on a telephone call on your hands free kit mm. and you finish that phone call and you think I can't remember the last 45 minutes of my journey yep. I don't remember it's because your anything. head is being taken away um, yeah. totally somewhere yep. else yeah. for example if I'm your wife <laughs> let's just pretend yeah. let's, let's role play excellent <laughs> <laughs> I'll go <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm going to get you involved. <laughs> so I'm ringing you. Matthew, can, on your way home, can you get me a pint of milk, please? You know where the supermarket is. Mm-hmm. So when you stop at the supermarket, just park right outside. And when you go into the supermarket, go to the third aisle on the right next to the butter. Where's your head right now? It is actually in the third aisle from the left of the right butter. Or that or why the hell is my wife calling me yet again? <laughs> <laughs> Meantime, you have travelled... Oh, yes. A fair a few Five junctions yards. up the M25, yeah. done numerous lane changes, probably sworn at people and don't remember a thing. Yeah. Perfect. The phones should, they really should be banned. There should be some locking mechanism. 
It could do it, but I think the problem is, yes, now, as they say, everything runs through your phone because that's now your stereo system, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy. But then it also is quite impressive about how the human brain can do so many of those multiple functions, including driving, which is a complex thing to do. I know we've all done it for many, many years. When you first learn, and you're doing that at 70 miles an hour, never more, of course, and figuring out the third aisle from the left where the milk is, it's pretty impressive until you crash into an ambulance. (laughs) I was crashed into you, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have said anything. Should have said no stories on that front. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's move on, shall yes. we? So the World Cup is it's up and running. Good. What countries are represented in the auction that we have? Do we have almost every country? Do you think? Not Germany, Italy, all well, the usual. Italy aren't there, but we've got them well represented. But they didn't make it. Oh yeah. Oh, on the football pitch. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh. Good start. Um, right, so yeah, plenty of English. Obviously the Germans. Uh, have we got any Swedish? Are they Sweden aren't there either, so we're all right. We're clear there. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing well, aren't we? What else have we got? There's no one from Ecuador in the showroom. Do we have any Iranian cars? No. You're going to have to help us with some of the more <laughs> obscure <laughs> exactly. car manufacturers now. I'm looking around. I mean, Tom, when you think about a country that a car comes from, mm. do you, does that make you feel warmer towards it for example like Italy Ferrari Mercedes Germany yeah I think there's obviously connotations that come you know German cars they they won't break but potentially a little bit more sterile and then you've got Italian cars which obviously full of passion and (laughs) may well break but you'll enjoy those periods between uh, breakages potentially more than you would with this German counterpart so you've got those stereotypes and I do think that there's a lot of there's no smoke without fire there. I do think that definitely carries through. But what, what about Britain? When you think about British cars, what does that? So I was just about to say up? French and everything slightly bonkers, which in it, which is good. It's a bit like the 1920s thing. It's it, it was slightly bonkers, aren't they? Yeah. And, and also break. Yeah. <laughs> uh, British though, well, just, it is very much led by that sort of gentleman's car, or you know, everything. You know, anything of Austin Healey's, Aston Martins, Jaguars. We always think we always come to those, or they're always. That sort of shed build or that sort of stiff upper lip and that's that's very much the feeling but I think because of that I think the reliability thing is sort of tailed away you mean got better yeah, yeah. whereas J- JLR mm-hmm. of reliability mm-hmm. you haven't got any on order, you haven't got any on order then <laughs> I, I've actually um, came here today in a 15 year old 911 as opposed to my Range Rover because I, it was is dead today. Just decide. I think the alternator's packed up. But we've said this before. That, Perfect. That, but again, Land Rover, Jaguar Land Rover. It's it's sort of it's it's been bought and because of that Britishness of its feel, and it's a mm. bit like that sort of you still they still hark back to that feeling of British gentleman's car, or it's a bit niche, a bit kitsch, a bit sort of like minis and so on. So you get that feeling of well, MGBs and yeah. Spitfires and uh, it's TBRs. All, the idea is that if you buy a British car, it's because you like cars. Yeah. I think it's probably the best analogy. Yeah. En- enthusiastic about. Yeah, Most so you, you actually like, you're a bit of a petrol head if you buy a British car. Yeah. Germanic cars, I think you're right, it's sort of almost the sensible choice. Yeah. The Italian cars, all the flair. The French means you're slightly bonkers. You know, the, the Scandinavians means you're probably an architect. <laughs> yeah, um, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no. but if you buy Korean or Japanese, you're probably just very staid to cars. It's just, you know, it's, it's a bit dull, but... You're just interested in things that work, work. consistently. Yeah. yeah. And perform a function incredibly efficiently. Yeah. Um, so, uh, talking of JLR, the owners at the moment are. I think go on, you should know this. I don't know. I think is it Tata. Tata. Is it Tata? Which is an Indian car. Indian, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since two thousand and eight, can you name an Indian car from Tata? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've certainly never sold one. No. No. Tiger, O R, Tiger, or a Harrier could be two of the choices they that you sound come really up with. really good yeah. first one sounds like an indian beer <laughs> oh yeah it does doesn't it i've never driven a tata have you not no i'd right, like that's to, a then. challenge would you <laughs> for next year yeah. for this google time. some pictures before you start <laughs> throwing around this one. time next year we have to someone has to have driven one i'm gonna have a look on auto trade later and buy one right what well, other cars companies then a quick whip around the world bac where does bac they're, come they're from Brits, aren't they yes yeah, what BAC does bac money. stand for British? You have got the BR, right? Big. <laughs> if you put the BR and the big together, what do you get? Sorry, BR and the big. BR from the British yeah. and big. Yes. 
Brig. Brig. Briggs Automotive Company. Oh, really? <laughs> the founding brothers are Neil and Ian Briggs, and yeah. they're British based in Liverpool. Sorry, okay. chaps. Let us go so to... It's never good when I, I fail at the classic <laughs> ones. <laughs> no, it's, uh, they're not classics. There's that BAC no, Mono thing, exactly, isn't it? The, yeah, the little yeah. one-seater motorbike thing. Modern, modern one. I'm yeah. I'm they're great. They are super duper. Really good. Uh, Dacia. Where's Dacia from originally? Dacia. Dacia originally was... Isn't it like Eastern Europe? Isn't it like... Uh, yeah. Not cr- not cr- no, sorry. no, pass. If you're listening to this or watching, can you guess? <laughs> Romania. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. no, is it a highlight? A highlight. It was an interesting insight to me. In 1966, it was founded, and then Renault took it over in 1996, which is why oh. we have the tie-up now with Dacia and Renault. Okay, Neo. Where's Neo from around the world? Chinese lot, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. And what do they produce? Crazy electric cars. Well, they're coming. Oh. Yeah, they're coming to the UK next year. I drove some. Last year, and they are really good. Are they? Yeah, really good. They've got a really interesting battery swapping. It's amazing system. how that's all going to change, is yeah. it? Because technology companies coming big into the automotive industry because they've stolen the march. Yeah, it'd be really interesting. Um, okay, Spiker. Where's Spiker come from? Uh, they're Dutch. Dutch. Yeah. 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 And basically, okay. the R8, wasn't it? That Spiker. Yeah, and when you, but when you get inside them, they are just obsessively trying to be like an aircraft inside. Well, which are quite cool. Yeah, they are really cool. It's like a Pagani mixed with an R8. Mm. But with a spiker badge on. Well, we sold which one is here, no I think here last year, mm. and sold really well. Lots of people really did really love it. Cool. But it, it, when you get inside, it's a really special place to sit inside. I always like it like the old Afro Mayors. It was always twice as much attention put into the inside. But <laughs> felt a bit almost like a, a bit like Bagani sort of style. Yeah. I think it was very bespoke switch gear, but underneath was something completely different. But yeah, it was quite cool. I did well, like you mentioned aircraft, and it's no wonder, because they also made aircraft mm. as a company, and even their badge is, is um, some propeller yes. yeah. propeller with, uh, with the wheel. And it was uh, launched in 1880 by two Dutch brothers who were blacksmiths. Mm. Yeah. So... I didn't realise the brand was that old. There okay, um, Zenos. Where's Zenos from in the world? Oh, I don't know, Greece. Okay, N- yeah, why not? <laughs> Sounds like a Greek island, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it does, going doesn't to, it? Going to Zenos this summer. Yeah, a little Greek island. <laughs> Lovely little taverns on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got absolutely no idea. Let's pick out. Uh, it's not, the problem is I know where it isn't, so I'm trying to think of something that it could be. Okay. No, I don't know, Spain. Okay. Would you have known this if it wasn't on your sheet? I'm afraid I would. Oh, that's annoying. Norfolk, Norfolk. England. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Not quite as exotic as one guess. Yeah. Yeah, they, and it was uh, created from two people who both worked at Lotus and Caterham together. So who were Greek are. and earned a Taverna. <laughs> <laughs> so they're lightweight sports cars, and they oh. they produce something called an E10, which I think is a bit of a love child between a Dodge Viper and a Renault Sport Spider, if you can imagine Funny. that. That I know. Blimey, yeah, that it's sounds like bonkers. It's like a Reedy from Reach back in a, an Irish Terrier. That's the sort of yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> in a Christmas jumper. Um, Ford. I want to say, so Ford, where does Ford come from? Oh, America. Yes. America, yeah. But don't you think that it is one of those companies that feels British? That's because of its, its working class origins. I think yeah. that probably feels, in any English-speaking country that sells Ford, it feels like it's part of the people. Yeah. But... Backbone of Britain and all yeah. that with the yeah, old exactly. transit. It, 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 and yeah. It, it, totally, yeah. yeah Transit's marketing here. teams that played a blinder. But I think strangely, it's played a blinder in the mass producing. But they, I don't think it, they cannot get out of that feel for the people's car because whenever I see uh, the Mustangs or any of the really, if they make anything really fabulous. I, I think it, they struggle against their own brand because they're so good at being the car for everyone. The Transits, the Fiestas, the, the Fiesta. Focus. I mean, I know. they're so good at that that when they the GT40 to me, I feel like it doesn't get the credit it deserves. The, no. new, the new GT40, should I say, because it just—it's a Ford. It's also half a million, six hundred grand. Mm. I mean, it's no better than a 720s that's one hundred and forty grand. Arguably but, worse. But, but stick a different badge on it. I think yeah. then people respect it. I think more in yeah. that in that in those realms. They got rid of the Fiesta, haven't they? I know this is such a sad thing. I'm a Mark One Fiesta owner, ah. and the Fiesta 
was built in many countries, one of which mm. was in England, in Dagenham, in yeah. good old Essex, from 1977 actually, which was the year after the Fiesta's launch, all the way through to 2002. So we had a we have a good, you know, good strong connection in this country with the Fiesta, and they sold over 20 million. And from next year, that's it. Ciao, ciao. And Ford has made a wonderful advert that I'm sure you will see at some point about you know a, a child and a dad sort of telling the story about the fiesta and then they sort of closed the book on the chapter and I was almost I did actually have a <laughs> tiny tear in my eye about the saying goodbye to a car and they're like oh is, is that the end of the story and they're like no 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 it's just just another chapter which gives you some lovely hope but I, I really was quite I'm quite sad about it because everyone's had a fiesta at some point in the family somewhere yeah. in the yeah first car yeah, yeah. exactly well, can we determine from that little roundup who's going to win the World Cup? Well, the most, I think the most heavily represented cars here between Germany and England. Okay. Oh, are they? Mm. So, <gasps> is that an omen? Could well be. Mm. Could well Actually, I've got, I don't be. Actually, I don't know where they can meet each other, but um, I'll have to ask my son that. He knows more than I do, but... Yeah, I think... Oh, I've got a poster up at home mm. on the wall. I've got a little book and he's filling out all the oh, scores, bless brilliant. him. So, yeah, Love he it. knows more than me. But I, let's hope it's let's, let's hope. hope it comes home. Yeah, Football's exactly. coming home. Um, and then just some stats on Brooklands then. What are your thoughts on Brooklands when you think about Brooklands, the former it's, wonderful racing circuit? What do you think it, about it? It's the it? banking. It's, it's seeing those original cars. And when you go and stand at the top of that banking and then envisage driving something, you know... Older than that old Renault over there, at with no seat with belts, no seat belt. barely any suspension, and, and it is. And you look at it and well, that's how it looks. Oh, it's because it's old. No, that's pretty much what it was like. It would have been bouncing along like this, you know, eighty miles an hour. And each section of that concrete has got a, a mm. seam in it, so it would have been yeah. doof, 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 proper doof. Friday afternoon job. So that. it reminds me a bit oh, like when you yeah. go to shouldn't good, have paid the contractors. <laughs> for it's rubbish. It's a bit like when you go to good and you see them driving the old cars really fast, and you just realise how dangerous motorsport was and how real it was and I, I don't want to discredit modern motorcars because it's, it's just incredibly quick but literally every single time they turn the ignition key that's really properly taking your life into your own hands yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then and that's what I always think of whenever I think of Brooklyn's I always think of that and obviously it now encapsulates uh, car showrooms and a Tesco's and all sorts, which is a bit sacrilegious, I know, really. You, you come out of a supermarket oh, and no. you, come, no, you pull out of the car park and you look up and there is the yeah. banking yeah. and that bank my grandfather raced here in a Fraser Nash in mm. the 30s and I just think wow he's you know yeah. it's very special I think it's I mean really I, I'm pulling out a supermarket yeah. car park well, I don't mind it. here because obviously there's a track here so this is motor heritage is sort of in keeping but I generally think they should just bulldoze everything inside here and re reconstitute the track yeah. it's such a massive part of English motoring history yeah. it seems madness that we allow it to have got to this state it's, it's now in fairness to, to Brooklands they have now got lottery grants and they're starting to they've redone the start finish straight but it's extremely expensive but I, it's, it's madness to me that that isn't know. you know kept for generations to come yeah. smash it down and have another uh, British F1 here no, Ooh, is that well, a sensible plan? Can F1s well, do, no. do that bank? well that's the thing you can get you almost three miles of banking mm. that's what the circuit was I mean, this is when this is when IndyCar meets. But have you F1. have you been stuck That's in the traffic in Weybridge before? Do you imagine? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't fancy that. Right. But just to, just to, it was 1907 to 1939 mm. that races were held here. Wow, I know. And it was um, also Britain's largest aircraft manufacturing centre by 1918. And just 11 days after opening, it held the world's first 24-hour race. Really? Imagine 24 hours in cars of, of that ilk. On bank sack. On those. Boom, <gasps> boom, boom. It's like that bit on the M25. It does my oh, head in. Yes, yeah. yeah. In a modern car. Except you're like that. Yeah. I've done a 24 hour race in a Citroen 2CV, okay, and that, well, that was tough enough. Oh, but, and, but at least I had some kind of. But the reason they went so fast, yeah. the reason they go so fast was just to try and keep the G force, to keep them in their seats. <laughs> If you're slow, yeah. you'd be holding onto the steering wheel, wouldn't you? Be sliding down. Uh, but How yeah, that, it's yeah, it, it just it's very evocative. Actually, a, a bit like when you see things like on the front cover, and you see old motoring, and you just think, yeah, that's that's sliding sideways, and it's it's almost tantamount to being out of control. Yeah. But, but don't also forget that cars weren't quite as fast. No. And and as powerful. Guess Even it would feel as fast. Oh, yeah. You basically yeah, yeah. sit on the road. I drove the, there's a Jaguar XK150 here, and I drove it over here from our showroom over here. And you get up above 40, 50 miles an hour, and 
you suddenly realise you, you may as well be doing 150 in a modern supercar because the, the brakes aren't going to stop you. You don't want you. to go faster, do you? No. Like, my slowing down plan is not a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I'm quite happy at 30, 40. Yeah. Good. Yeah, like that. Good on them. Yeah. Good old boys. Yeah. Yes. Right then, we will just end this podcast with some jokes. Oof. Are you ready? Here we go. Christmas jokes, obviously, just to get us all wrapped up into it's, the festival. Remember, it's all in the delivery, Vicky. Okay, cool. Okay. Do you want to do it? No. Have we got any sort of canned laughter just for the camera, just in case? I, I, I'm sure I can... I can pretend to be amused, but... Could you? Yeah. And could you look like you're amused as well? I can try. <laughs> <laughs> How much does Santa pay for his sleigh? No, Vicky. Nothing. It was on the house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what do turkeys? Sorry. What do donkeys send out near Christmas? Something to do with turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> Mule tide greetings. Oh, <laughs> have you just? Have you opened up a box of crackers early? You have, haven't you? <laughs> what did the snowman say to the aggressive carrot? The snowman's the aggressive carrot. Something about his nose, or oh, I don't uh, know. I'm not bright enough to work Get out. Get out of my face! <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a real laugh. It was more <laughs> you than was, what you said. I think it was fear. It was, it was, it it was nervous laughter. Oh, do you want another one, or, or Just, you don't? No, no, keep what? going. Oh, We're really? going to make okay. you keep going. How did the bauble know she was addicted to Christmas? I don't know. She'd been hooked on Christmas trees all her life. Oh, clever. What do you get if you eat Christmas decorations? Everyone knows this. Come on. Tinselitis. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Thank you very much, boys, for joining together for the yes. romp that we've had. Thank you very much indeed for listening, for watching. If you want to see more, what can they do? Or where can they, where can they look and search? Yes, Vicky, good point. Um, they can find us, obviously, on YouTube. It's probably where you're watching us now. If you're listening on streaming platforms, do say subscribe or follow whatever it is. But you can also follow Historics on Instagram, where you will see a little snapshot of the cars arriving at the next auction. Will they not, Matthew? They so will. make sure you're following on all platforms, because there's lots going on, depending on the platform. Oh, thank you so much. Until the next pod. Bye-bye.